Did you like dinner tonight, Ted? I ate it, didn't I? <laughs> yes. But did you enjoy it? What's to enjoy? It's just food. When you've been eating as long as I have, it all tastes the same. But it was special, Ted. Didn't you notice what it was? It was late. We missed half, <laughs> missed half the Sullivans. No, the food. Didn't you notice what it was? It was grey. Not the veggies. <laughs> the other bit. The light grey bit. It was your favourite. Oh, chops. Oh, bonds of hell. Best chops I've had in years. It was fish. <laughs> fish, chops, ice cream. All tastes the same with tomato sauce on it. No wonder the country's in a mess. It's your own fault. You put tomato sauce on everything. I don't. You do. Name me one thing you have without tomato sauce. Lots of things. What? Beer. Gotcha. <laughs> I win, you lose, I'm smart, you're stupid, and I'm the king of the castle. <laughs> yeah, all right, Dad, you're the king of the castle. It was very nice, Mum. What was it? <laughs> Mullet Mornay. Your father invented it. Dad, when did he invent a recipe? <laughs> when he caught that mullet and got it tangled in the outboard motor propeller. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you remember? Oh, well, I must have told you about it. We were down at the Fairy Dale Carra Park. I had to serve it out with a ladle. <laughs> and then your father got all stroppy after he ate the only big bit. Ooh, why? <laughs> Still had the fish hook in it. <laughs> Gosh, we had a wonderful holiday that year. I was in hospital. I know, Ted. <laughs> Bloody country doctors. They kept me in that one horse hospital for six weeks. It wasn't that bad. It was. The ward only had three beds. Me, a kid with measles, and a kelpie with a busted leg. <laughs> but that was only a minor thing. How come it took six weeks? It didn't. Only it took two hours to get the fish hook out. And then the doctor put it into a jar and put it beside your father's bed as a memento. And when your father woke up, he was thirsty, so he drank it. <laughs> and it took them another five weeks to find the hook again. <laughs> Where was it? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Where did it turn up? It was under the measle kid's pillow. Little bludger had switched jars and I drank his front tooth. <laughs> oh, dear. Then ended up with measles. <laughs> I was pregnant with you at the time, Craig, so they wouldn't let Greta and me see your father for weeks. Gosh, we had a wonderful holiday. <laughs> That'd be right. Carry hooting around the beach making necklaces out of driftwood while I'm eating me breakfast through a tube in me arm. Someone should blow holidays up. When I was a boy... Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go again. I suppose when you were a boy you didn't have holidays because you couldn't afford a calendar. Quite right. When I was a boy we were so poor we could only afford a half day every ten years. Even then all we could do was run around the paddock with a chook on our head. <laughs> Why? Because we couldn't afford party hats. <laughs> oh, fool. Are you trying to tell me that you and Uncle Bob used to rush around with a chook on your head? Not at the same time. Why? We only had one chook. <laughs> I know that because it was my job to get up every morning and count it. <laughs> well, now I know what sort of farm you grew up on. <laughs> a funny farm. You're mad, Dad. Oh, now, soap and water, Craig. That mad dad is still your father. You should be thankful that we've got him. God knows they've tried to take him away from us a few times. <laughs> a wall? Things? Anyway, time to do the dishes. Freeze! <laughs> Whose turn is it? His! Tis not! His! I had to do it last night. Oh, yes, but that was different, Craig. Your father's socks were hurting him. <laughs> How can his socks hurt? He had them on the wrong feet. <laughs> oh, that's impossible. It is not. There's a special hole in me left sock to make room for me corn. If I've got the wrong sock on, it hurts like Billy when I stand next to a sink. Especially that one in the kitchen there. Now go on, off you go. Oh, oh, it's not fair, finish. it's not my turn. Oh, I did it last, so it's your turn. Go on, go on, go on, go on. I go can't on. tonight. I've got to study. I've got exams in two weeks. Study? Huh. 
I know what you're going to be doing tonight, perving all over those nudie poor naked bosom books of yours. Craig, you make sure you put a bright globe in your reading lamp. Well, why? Because your father says that looking at all those books could affect your eyesight. <laughs> Quite right. Anyway, what's so important about study instead of dishes? Dad, I'm in my final year of medicine. I've got to study the essential part of being a doctor. Well, what's that? Tax avoidance schemes. <laughs> Proud of Craig, dear. Just think, before we know it, he'll be a doctor and too good to talk to us. <laughs> Unless, of course, we get into Medibank private, then I'm sure he'll be able to fit us in. That'd be right. Punsy, liberal voting, BMW driving quacks. I charge you 20 bucks to pee in a bottle. <laughs> and you do all the work. <laughs> Ted? It is when they say, stop now, I only want a little bit. <laughs> Where the hell do they expect to put the rest of it? <laughs> Someone should blow doctors up. Now, Ted, you cannot go around blowing up the medical profession. They are privileged people. Do you know that their wives can double park outside any Myers they want. Very soon, Thelma, you too will join the ranks of the double parking brigade. Because I have a surprise for you. Don't tell me you're going to become a parking cop. Better than that, Phil. A real cop? We'll be rich. <laughs> will you listen to me, woman? I'm going to become an executive. An executive? You? Oh, how posh. But how? And why? And what is an executive? An executive, Phil, is a bloke who gets paid a fortune for wearing a suit and carrying his lunch in a briefcase. And you want to be one? That's right. But you can't have just bought you a new lunchbox. Stick the dog's lunch in it, they've chewed up their old one. For I've applied for a position at head office and I'm going to be sales manager. Why do you want this job, Ted? To realise my immense potential and to help the company expand rapidly and shove it up O'Grady, that snotty little branch manager who keeps knocking back my string requisitions. Do you get a pay rise? 150 bucks a week plus car allowance and unrestricted use of the company aftershave. Aftershave? Oh, how posh. <laughs> You'll be buying an alpha next. <laughs> Sky's the limit, Phil. Oh, well, good luck, Ted. Still... This isn't getting the dishes done. Oh, sit down and relax, Phil. Put your feet up. Get used to living in luxury because executives' wives have dishwashers. Oh, really, Ted? Nothing's too good for you, Phil. Oh, thank you, Ted. The tricks is in the cupboard under the sink. Off you go. Bloody woman! <laughs> oh, hello, dear. How was your day? Bloody shambles, of course. Someone should blow that nun up. <laughs> You had to park outside the Catholic... Worse than that, I had to park under the Morton Bay fig tree. Sticky leaves and bird poop like Bostick all over the kingdom. <laughs> Wouldn't park me regular plozzy. That vicious little nun was tarry hooting around, marching hundreds of cut-off cardinals over the crossing. Bless their little hearts. It was their school sports day. That's why it rained all day. Couldn't happen to a nicer bunch. <laughs> Bit of luck, it'll shrink their tyres up till their heads fall off. <laughs> Still, the sun will be out soon. It'll dry up their steaming little tyres even tighter, I think. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I was studying the clouds when I bumped into that nun on the crossing. <laughs> nun nudging is against the law. <laughs> Serves her right. She shouldn't have stuck a PK in me grill. <laughs> Where's me paper? tonight, Ted. What? No newspaper? What am I going to look at tonight? It's always me. <laughs> there you go, Phil. I've just been looking at you. <laughs> Why haven't we got a paper? Paper boys on strike. What? They're not holding out for that slipping off the pedal allowance again, are they? No, Ted. <sighs> Snotty little swap card carrying communists. <laughs> Someone should blow paper boys up. No, Ted. He's on strike because we haven't paid him. Well, why not? Because I've run out of housekeeping money and he won't take bank card. <laughs> why don't you give him a check? Oh, he won't take one of our checks. Not after you gave him one for Christmas. Pussy little bludger. The bank manager saw him yesterday before me. He wouldn't take the bank manager's check either. <laughs> 
What's all this no housekeeping gap? Oh, I don't know, Ted. Must be this inflation thingy that's going round. It's made my purse go all thin and limp. <laughs> I only gave you some housekeeping money last week. I sold it for food. <laughs> I need more. Oh, all right. I got paid today. You're lucky you're married to a generous man. <laughs> there you go. Twenty? Oh, this won't buy the Greyhounds, Jaffles or even the lunch wraps. <laughs> well, how much do you want? At least a hundred. A hundred bucks? What are you going to do? Build a block of flats in the driveway? <laughs> Did you say that every week? Things are very expensive now that Mr. Fraser has fixed the economy. <laughs> well, well, all right. There you go. A hundred. Thank you. Hang on. The pay envelope's still chocker. Look at that. Oh, Ted. It's blank. They've rubbed the money bit off and the Queen slipped off the other side. <laughs> That's me pay slip, woman. Oh. Pick on me grandmother. I got an extra 150 bucks. You know what this means? Someone made a mistake. No, no. I can get my bank card retreaded. No! Well, what does it mean? It means I've got the job. I'm assistant sales manager. I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be powerful, and I'm going to shove it right up O'Grady. <laughs> to the man of the moment, grumble bum. Ah, Bruno, he is an executive now. Sorry? to Mr. Grumblebum. <laughs> That's much nicer. <laughs> to, to Mr. Mr. Grumblebum. Grumblebum. <laughs> oh, 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 those bubbles give my nose a flush. <laughs> well, Dad should be home any minute now. I'm dying to hear all about it. He's home now. How come? Well, he's training to be an executive. He didn't go to work. <laughs> What's the train? Oh, lots of things. Had to have his sandwiches measured up for his briefcase and, you know, with all those other measurements. <laughs> what, for some suits? Oh, far more important than clothes. What? Golf clubs. <laughs> Grumblebum's going to pay golf? Mm. That's like giving the Boston Strangler a piece of rope for his birthday. <laughs> oh, Bruno, you make me laugh. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't understand it. <laughs> Where is Dad? Well, he's in the bedroom, practising firm handshakes with the mirror. <laughs> yes. Dale Carnegie wrote a book about it, you know. Successful shaking for the man of action. <laughs> Ted! Come on, your champagne will get flat and Greek and Bruno are here. Yeah. What are you doing? Practising my management technique. Oh. You're fired, you hear me, O'Grady? You're fired! <laughs> I'm a give it a go. How was that, Phil? Oh, very good, Ted. Now, come on, or your bubbles will go all soggy. <laughs> How do I look, Phil? You look like a butler. The <laughs> Jeeves of Wombat Crescent. <laughs> Don't you come the raw Governor General with me, mate. <laughs> I'll stick this somewhere uncomfortable and open it. Ted, you look so... so... so sort of... puffed upon me. Thelma <laughs> Bulpit, how dare you? Just because I clawed my way up the corporate cliff face to success. At least you could do something with yourself. Dad, don't be awful. What do you mean? Well, you're the wife of an executive now, and I expect you to behave as such with grace and decorum and dignity. So brush up in your bloody manners and out of me way. Cause you're... <laughs> Dad, how could you? Now you apologise to Mum. Never. Bosses don't apologise, they order and fire. So watch it to be. You heard him, Mrs. B. You give the order and I'll fire. <laughs> with you have I been spoken to like that in this house? Well, things are changing and so's the house. What do you mean? Well, head office is in Melbourne, so I'm going to sell this dump and move down to the land where Yarris grow. <laughs> I saw the estate agent today and he says I can unload this joint in a week. Dump? Joint? Ted, you're talking about our house. This is our home. That mantelpiece is the same 
very mantelpiece that Greta bumped into and knocked out her two front teeth that kept her ugly for 18 months. <laughs> you can still see the marks. Where? On the mantelpiece. <laughs> and under this couch is the burnt patch where Craig blew up the budgie with his chemistry set. Destructive little bludger. It was your fault. You said someone should blow that budgie up and it landed in the pockets. <laughs> Melbourne, you said you'd never go there because trams give you cancer. Oh, I, I don't. I've always loved Melbourne, especially since Ron Barassi became Premier. <laughs> so that politician, Dill. Ted, I don't believe the change that's come over you. Success has gone to your head. More than that, Phil, has gone to my ignition key. What do you mean? I'm going to scrap the Kingswood and buy a fair lane. <laughs> Her very own doorbell. Oh gosh, I'm going to miss that. You know, all these years, every time it's rung, there has always been someone there. <laughs> it's never lied to me yet. <laughs> there it goes again. <laughs> oh, there must be two people there. <laughs> I better answer it before the porch gets chocker. <laughs> Cold power because it makes my cold water go all soapy. <laughs> Have I won the trail bike of my dreams? All the jogging shoes? Mrs. Ballpit? I am she. You're the Rinso man. Craig, what have you done with the Rinso? No, no, no. You, you don't understand. I'm not the Rinso man. Nugget. You're the Nugget man. Craig, I've won the camper van. <laughs> no, you haven't won anything. I want to see your husband. What's he won? Oh, no, 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 no. He couldn't have. The breweries don't run competitions. <laughs> Mrs. Bullpitch, you don't understand. I'm from your husband's company. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, oh, <laughs> come in. Thank you. Yes. Which one of his lackeys are you? <laughs> None. My name's O'Grady. <laughs> I'm the chief manager here. I've heard about you. You're the one who won't let him have string. <laughs> no, but I've offered him enough rope. <laughs> He's going to fire you. Look, uh, this is all a bit embarrassing. I know, but it I... must be awful for a man of your age to be fired. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Ball. Well, I will, I will do what I can. But you know what he's like once he's made his mind up, and I would be very careful if I were you, because he said that he was going to shove you up something. <laughs> Mrs. Bullpit, will you stop rabbiting away and please listen to me? Well, Mr. Shunting O'Grady, that settles it. I am certainly not going to plead on your behalf. You can just eat your shove and eat it. <laughs> Mum, calm down. Hello, I'm Craig Bullpit. Now, what seems to be the problem, Mr. O'Grady? Well, the problem is that the computer made an error and overpaid Ted this week. It didn't. Ted, or Mr. Bullpit to you, has earned a well-deserved promotion. We have to suffer it in Melbourne. No. He didn't get the promotion. I got the promotion. And I'm going to Melbourne next week. And my wife doesn't want to go either. However, let's leave my divorce out of this. <laughs> now, let's get this straight. Dad hasn't been promoted. No. You have. Yes. And he's not going to Melbourne. Right. Oh. What about the house? No, that's not going to Melbourne either. <laughs> Craig, the estate agent. I must, I must ring the estate agent. Oh, Craig, Craig, tell Mr. Nice Man O'Grady to sit on a beer and give him a couch to drink. Um, look, uh, Craig, I I'm sorry, this must be very upsetting, but... Uh, well, the company's willing to let him keep the extra few dollars this week, but um, from here on, uh, he's going to be back on the same money as dispatch supervisor Grade A. Well, grade A acting? No, 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 we've decided to make it permanent as a sort of, you know, remuneration. Well, does it get more money? Uh, no, not Mr. Ballpit. Oh. I'll get you that beer. <clears throat> Thank you. Bill, I'm home. I got the travellers' checks. They tried to tell me that I could use Sydney money down there, but I didn't fall for it. <laughs> Hello, Ted. Pickle me, Grandmother. It's him. What are you doing here? Well, I'm a bit embarrassed, Ted. Oh, look, you've come here to grovel, haven't you? To crawl at me feet. All right, go on down your knees. Go on, crawl, lick the carpet clean. <laughs> no, Ted. What? All right, you're fired. 
Get out of here, you miserable little string miser worm. Dad, listen on. to me. Shut up, I'm firing snot face. Go on. Dad. <laughs> listen to me. Come what? Here. Are you sure? Yes. Sorry, Ted. So I'm I'm not. Nope. Can I stay? Yep. And there's no extra money? Nope. <laughs> Want to buy a suit? <laughs> Hello? No, his son. Oh, no. Okay. Thanks for calling. Bye. Who was it? The estate agent. They've just sold the house. Pickle me, grandmother! The Kingswood's going out in the street! <laughs>